In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Diabolic Wars. By Pope Shenouda III. Part 13. Chapter 5. Benefits of Diabolic Wars. God does not prevent the devil from fighting us, but he takes our sight in these diabolic wars, and turns them to our spiritual benefit. Thus we see Saint Paul the Simple, after living with Saint Anthony for some time protected by his prayers, he was asked by Saint Anthony to reside alone, so that he might face the diabolic wars in his loneliness, and get benefit for himself. What then are the spiritual benefits which may be gained from diabolic wars? Those wars which the secluded hermits experienced in the desert and wilderness, till they could devote themselves to the love of God and could fight the enemy. 1. The first benefit is humility. The more severely diabolic wars fight a person, the more he feels his weakness, and this puts an end to his pride, and he feels penitent within. He finds himself liable to fall, and his will fallible, and recognizes how sin has cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. Prov 7.26 2. Prayers and holding fast to God asking his help. When a person is at rest, he may not seek divine assistance, and may not feel his urgent need for it. But, when the war is severe against him, he cries out to God to give him victory over his cruel enemy. Thus, feeling himself weak, he holds fast unto God in deep prayers, in strong relations as he said, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. P.S. 5015. 3. Spiritual wars call for compassion towards sinners. Whoever is not fought by the devils may be hard towards sinners and condemn them when they fall. But whoever has been fought and experienced the violence of the enemy is compassionate towards every sinner and prays for him. As St. Paul the Apostle says, remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Had 13.3. He also says about the Lord of glory, for in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Hab 2.18. 4. Spiritual wars give the person experience. The person becomes practiced in fighting, and learns war, becomes acquainted with the intrigues and arts of the enemy. He gets experience through his rising or his falling. It is known that every promotion must be preceded by an examination, and whoever passes this examination is promoted as is the case with students. So, we find that whoever has fought the wars of the enemy has gained experience. These spiritual experiences are a school which provides spiritual guides, who are able to help others, and encourage them and reveal the wiles of the enemy to them. 5. These wars are a blessing through which we gain crowns. True are the words said by one of the saints, none shall be crowned except the one who conquers, and none shall conquer, except the one who fights. Our endurance of the wars of the enemy and withstanding them, our struggle and our resistance, all this shows our love for the war, and we gain crowns for this. As one of the fathers said, the crowns are not given in the war only to the soldiers who won victory, but also to those who were wounded and hurt, as long as they have not yielded to the enemy and fought him. 6. These wars always give us the spirit of wakefulness and readiness. As the Lord says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, Luke 12 35. The feeling of a person that he is in a war makes him always ready to fight and perform all the spiritual practices to conquer, such as prayers, fasting, humility and spiritual counsel. But if there were less wars, perhaps this would lead him to spiritual lethargy. Wars make him always ready, always cautious and on his guard. The fear of falling makes him get more prepared in order to conquer. 7. Spiritual wars make us powerful and not afraid. He who fears war is he who does not face it or who does not fight. But the person who experiences wars gains courage and boldness. The crowns which he gains encourage him to enter other wars, and he fears not to fall. Would a student say, I shall not be examined because I am afraid lest I should fail. I shall not even study or go to school. No, he takes the examinations bravely saying, I shall overcome any difficulties of learning and examinations. 8. Spiritual wars are a school of faith. In these wars we see how God's hand interferes, how it helps and gives victory, how it rebukes the enemy, how it gives the small David the power to conquer Goliath the valiant. This gives us deep confidence in God's love, in his care and work for us. 9. 
spiritual wars express the principle of giving the devil equal opportunities. He had the opportunity to fight with all his power, lest he should protest against God's children saying, why does the Lord reward them? If one had the chance I would overthrow them. This is what he did in the days of Job and he had this opportunity, but Job remained holding fast to his integrity. Job 2. God allows the devil to fight the believers, but he gives them power to conquer and disgrace the devil. 10. Lastly, spiritual wars open the doors of the heavenly kingdom before us and determine our rank in it. Everyone takes his wages according to his labor and his struggle. So, we find the believers do their best to express their love for God, because how would their love be revealed, except by testing it through spiritual wars, and how would their rank in the heavenly kingdom be determined without such spiritual tests? May God be with us in all our spiritual wars and lead us to triumph in Him. Thank God.